Now we got we got it, we got it. What's up, man? Hey, how are you? How are you, bro? All good? Doing all right. What's up, bro? This is Aaron. Say hi. Hey, how are you? What's up? Say hello. hello. <laughs> Obviously, they're always around the cameras. So, um, what we're we'll gonna do today is we're we'll gonna do some mobility stuff. So we're gonna get some uh, real keen to get some new techniques, uh, some stuff to do after my training. Obviously, you know I got, I've been pretty beat up uh, the last couple of months, probably really. Um, that's why I went back to heels when I was squatting. That was feeling a bit better. But the goal is to get back into flats and just get their mobility better in general. Um, so that's what I work on today. So stay tuned. We'll uh, get some good stuff from the two boys from Pure Movement and Lower Heart. Go. Okay, we sort of. Worked out a few things just for warms and warm downs. Maintenance, this was a big topic for you because it's an overuse injury. Yeah, yeah. If we can maintain that, if we can clear condition and maintain that health, more capacity to work, yeah, yeah. faster recovery. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. And I'll play around with back angle, so upright, mm -hmm. forward, knee position, rotation. Right. This sort of principle, you want this as close to the joint as possible, because yeah, yeah. that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, I'll get it as high as I can. Yeah. And get on your knee, because I want you forcing your weight down. Same thing as what I was doing with you, I was getting the bone to drive back to the joint. Um, yeah, you're going to do the same thing with your body weight. Key points, um, you're very comfortable with this one. It looks really good, it looks like you're doing a lot of good work with it. This yeah, is just yeah. something to add to that. Uh, and we're going to play with some rotations, so I want you to actually pick that leg out a little bit. Oh, okay, so we're yeah. winding that capsule in. It's going to get real tight. You're not going to get a lot of motion in it. Um, but just make sure your hips aren't tipped up the side. Yeah. It's just in that capsule. And weight on. So now I'm driving into my hip. So is, that, is you focusing on like internal rotation? Yeah. 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 We really want that internal rotation. Which might sound weird because we don't associate that shape with a squat. Yeah, yeah. But when we're actually down in a squat, our leg's not externally rotated. Yeah, no, it's yeah. like if you lose internal rotation, you, yeah. you, you get that dumping feeling. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like that big spine. button weight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is going to help clear up some of that capsule in the hip. Be tight. Yeah. Yeah. That's as far as we need to go. We're going to start to see the hip tilt a little bit. We're talking about maximizing hip flexion, which is what we need for us to squat. Yeah. Um, we're using the band because we can help create space. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. So we've got quite a, quite a heavy band here. Mm. And with this change for females, males, stronger athletes, weaker athletes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm quite a small athlete. Yeah. I still use a thicker band because I'm used to being thrown around a little bit. But yeah. smaller band if that's more comfortable. But anyway. Cool. Key point is that joints don't just rotate around a single axis. They actually glide quite a bit. In the joint here, my bone actually needs to clear up space and drive to the rear. So we're going to recreate what needs to happen with the aid of the band. And I want weight going down onto my knee because that's going to drive my leg back. It gets a little bit complicated, but that's all we need to know. Yeah. Driving my body weight on the knee is going to drive this bone backwards. So a lot, a lot of tension onto the knee, through the ground. What this band is doing is actually pulling laterally to give me even more of pulling it. I'm not dislocating myself, but yeah. it's giving me a little bit more space. Uh, and this is a really common one that we see. It's a pigeon one that everyone knows. Here's a new one though. Wind that knee, uh, sorry, wind that leg into internal rotation. Yeah. Sounds a bit funny, but I'll explain in a second. Uh, key points making sure that the hip isn't rotated out as well, and our spine needs to look. Really neutral. So really neutral, so straight up and down through straight the back. Down, my hips aren't yep. Bands pulling, I've got weight on, and I'm just going to work into that capsule. It's not going to be a lot of room, it's literally just this much motion, and that's fine. Same thing, weights on. Cool. Okay, let's go the opposite side, so keeping this leg down, we're raising this one now. Asymmetry, which means one of your legs is operating slightly different than the other. Yeah. 
why we don't know just yet, we just know that it is. So if we were to actually score this, your right leg raise would be a one, which you can't do it, and your left leg is a, a pass or acceptable. You have a three, which is perfect. So we have some slight difference. To see if that is coming from your legs or not, we'll find that out in a little bit. And I place your, are you right handed? Right hand up, place your hand up so so. Yep, right hand behind. Cool, so to get a perfect, that should be within my hand span. And so if I'm looking at that, one and a half, uh, try again, so arms out again, I'll go left hand up again. And as remembering, Brett here, world class athlete, we might be able to get away with a few of these restrictions because he needs to be incredibly tight to produce force. We might be able to make it better, come back up, one more time. Side. Get that off. So what we have is a distinct left-right difference for both your lower and upper quadrant mobility. And then we have very good core quantity, which I'd expect from a world-class powerlifter. Uh, and then we have an acceptable level of core quality. So one leg will be up, and then again the other leg will be down. Let's just make sure we can achieve that position. Leg straight. Cool, we're going to stimulate the core by grabbing onto the band, keep the arms straight, arms dead straight, hold that to your hips, yep, dead straight, arms dead straight, there we go, now raise your leg, yep, and back down, I want you to keep the legs as close together as possible, cool, now let the band off afterwards, so we're going to teach your core how to fire that off, so we're going to go core on, raise the leg, lower the leg, core off, on, raise, lower, and then let off, good, on, raise, lower, no, his hips still on the ground, I can't see from here. Uh, coming off just at the end of the road. So put him on distance. You want to go back a little further? Yeah, come back a little further. Yeah, it's coming off. Yep, uh, you just want to sneak your body back a little bit further. Put your work within the range you can achieve. Yeah. What we're going to do, inhale into the space down here. Yeah. Exhale and try and rotate your shoulder to the ground. Keep this knee down. So again, because this leg is up and over the hip, you are not rotating through your lower back. You're rotating pretty much mid back upwards. Cool. That's fine, girl. Can you take four breaths? So if someone tries the reach test at home, yeah. finds a similar issue to Brett, they can incorporate this quite safely into their routine yeah. to try so and clear some of that pretty, up? Uh, pretty safe. I mean, the only one is if you've had dislocation. Yeah. It's probably okay. not a good idea to be playing around with your joints and getting more mobility. Dislocation is a probably talk more about motor control. Yeah, of course, yeah. Thank you much, Richard. Have that. So constant pressure, but adjust to the end. So that's going to be a little bit more effective than just yeah. sinking and rolling around, hoping your body knows what to do. Mm -hmm. You can sort of guide it along that path. So it's yeah. pretty bad egg. And that makes sense because that all feeds in through your knee, into the ligament. That's yeah. what got hot. Um, yeah. In your um, warm downs as well, we've got Voodoo. Yeah, I've got the Voodoo, um, yeah. You've been using it? Yeah, it's chilling out there now. Okay. I'll give you something else you can do. Rip down, rip down, rip down. Hold the shape and breathe out. Everything you've got. You should feel shaky. <laughs> when you're there, I should feel this get super hard. Like you've created a freaking vacuum. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're gonna breathe out for you. Oh, Everything you've got, hold the shape, rip down. Good, now breathe into that. Don't lose tension. This tension is created by breathing out.
coming up right now. Hit a um, 280 tonight for a single, which was real, real good for me anyway at the moment. It was around 8 RPE, like pretty, it was pretty quick. I jumped straight from 260, which moved faster than smooth in like oh, months. I don't know how, like, you saw that a sound was pretty quick. And um, yeah, so I went, so I left it at that. I don't want to push any further, like an 8.5 or This is the last week of this uh, development cycle, so there's no point. Um, so I could just start at a higher base, hopefully the week after. So we're using a four week block again. Uh, third week, at the start of the third week, will be the same four session as this. And then the end of the third week is actually the, the meet week itself, which ties in um, with, the, with the way that I'm... So basically I'm running, I run four week blocks based on that's how long it takes me to peak. Um, so you can always notice in my fourth week of these RPE style sessions, by the fourth week, it's when I'm sort of pushing the parameters of the RPE, so staying within that like 0.5 each side of them. So the goal is to line that up for when I'm actually lifting. So that's why we're targeting it for the end of the third, beginning of the fourth week. Um, and hence that's why we're doing a uh, pivot week next week, and then start that block again, so I peak the comp. Um, anyway, really happy with 280 tonight. Uh, volume tonight was the heaviest it's been as well, 232.5. For two sets, going 230 for two sets, and then I'll drop right back to 220, which is about 75% um, for another two sets of five, so that's six by five. Um, so it's always a pretty tough workout, regardless of what it is. Um, what else do I want to say? I'm going to say something else. Anyway, let's just do this here. So I'm hitting my last drop set tonight, 200 kilo, just for a two by two. Uh, this is the second set right now. So we're back, we're back to uh, singles on the deadlift today, it's, I basically was doing doubles over the last few weeks as you guys may have seen and they were just so bad, like I just could not progress in them at all. So I started on like week one, I think I did 292 for my top double and it was it was tough, it was like 10 RPE it felt like, so I was like alright let's be a little bit less aggressive the next week and I think it was like maybe 290 or 287 or something and it was still super tough and then next week I think I... I failed 295 for a double, so I got the single and then just completely went to crap. So I um, emailed Mike, sent Mike a message and I said, look, let's get rid of this. Um, cannot deal with the doubles anymore. 
Um, and all it was was, um, you know, essentially building up to that top double around 9 RPE and then a couple of low drops. So it was, it was overall it was about 10 working reps for, for the session or so. And um, yeah, just couldn't build any momentum on that. Um, and the accessory deadlift day, I think, was it was like a pause deadlift or something like that anyway. But um, this is the first week back on uh, single and volume as well, so this is going to be, uh, should be, shouldn't be too bad. It's six sets of five today, um, which is the exact same as what I did yesterday for squats. So I've got 240 on the bar after a 290 and a 295 single, um, which both moved really, really well. Um, I don't really know what's changed so much with um, just uh, my positioning this week. It's just been so much better than the last three weeks. Um, I didn't get any of that, like just um, you know, breaking off the floor, my uh, uh, lower back wasn't just rounding straight away like it has been, um, which has been a big part of the problem. Um, I am feeling a lot more mobile, so obviously that's uh, coming into play this week. Um, I felt pretty much pain free on the squats yesterday, so confidence was way up. Felt good on the bench, and again, feeling uh, like I can get into good positions today, which I think has been the key difference. So, anyway, we're going to get stuck into this uh, first set of five. So, can you look at this? Look at that. Now, you can slide your iPhone in there. Perfect, man. You can run in the dark with them. Reflective A7 logo. Mismatched socks. OVO slash Jordan release shoes for deadlifting. Limited edition, not available for sale anywhere. However, I do have five pairs, I think. I bought five pairs when they came out. Just future-proofing. Future-proofing my future of deadlifts. And, um, you're still listening to me. You haven't turned this video off yet. <laughs> <laughs> 